Hello friends, welcome back to NPTEL online certification course on soil and water conservation engineering. I am Rajin Singh, professor in agriculture and food engineering department of IIT Kharagpur. We are in week 4, lecture 19 and the topic today is broad base terrace. Coming to the course content that we are covering this week. We started this week uh, with lecture 16 uh, where we introduced terraces. The lecture 17 was on bench terraces and lecture 18 we solved problems dealing with the design of bench terraces using the concepts learned in lecture 17. In today's lecture that is lecture 19 we will be talking about broad based terraces and in lecture 20 we will solve problems dealing with the design of broad based terraces by utilizing the concepts we learn today. Starting with the broad base terraces, broad base terraces are defined as terraces for which all constructed and excavated slopes are flatter than 5 is to 1 and the entire terrace is cropped. So, as we saw in the previous case also, terrace means it is used for a steep slope or area hilly, hilly terrain where the slope is steep. So, here you can see that the original ground surface is at a steep slope and what we are we typically do is that we cut the soil on the upstream side and utilize the same soil to fill on the downhill side. So, we cut on the upstream side and fill in the downhill side and in the process what is done is that we, we, we have certain excavated slopes that is which is here. This is nothing but excavated slope and then constructed slope. So, these are the ridges this is basically channel and this is refined as ridge. So, these, these slopes are constructed slopes. So, the excavated slopes and constructed slopes they all are kept flatter than 5 is to 1. So, that is very important they are kept flatter than 5 is to 1. So, that uh, the entire terrace can be utilized for agricultural cropping. So, or cropping or for agricultural production. So, earth fill for the terrace ridge is normally obtained from excavation of the terrace channel. So, this is basically this is nothing but we are talking about this is terrace channel and this is this we are defining as terrace ridge. So, what we are doing we are excavating this channel and then utilizing that particular earth for, for constructing this terrace ridge. So, basically this terrace ridge is constructed by the earth field obtained from excavation of terrace channel and their adaptability is limited to smooth topography with land slopes of less than 8 percent. So, important thing is that the land slopes should be less than 8 percent in this case and the topography should be smooth because we want that this entire area should be cultivated and that simply means that uh, the there there will be that means once it is cultivated area that means there will be movement of agricultural machines, machinery, tractor, power tillers or whatever. Uh, it could be manual cultivation also. So, because there will be movement of uh, agriculture machines, so this land should be smooth enough for agricultural operations or, uh, or cultural operations. So, that is why we keep the ridge flat and typically this area should be smooth and slope should be limited to 8 percent for the adaptive for the construction or for the adaptability of broad based terraces. Now, these are preferred due to ease of construction with a plow, tractor blade or any earth moving equipment simply by moving the soil downhill to form a channel and a ridge. So, the construction is very simple as you can see that the construction is very simple because you see that simply what we are doing you are removing the soil from the uphill side that is this side we are removing the soil this is a soil that is being cut from the original land and this soil itself is being filled here to create this ridge. 
So, basically this is simply earth moving that is the operation involved and that is why it is easier to construct because that can this operation can be performed by simply a plow by tractor blade or any simple earth moving machinery or earth moving equipment uh, which uh, with which it can be performed. So, that is why it is simple and the flat slope of this shape allow farm equipment to operate on constructed ridge slopes therefore, allowing cropping of the entire field. So, this point we have also seen earlier and we have seen that all these slopes we try to keep uh, uh, flatter than 5 is to 1. Even here, so all the slopes we try to keep uh, flatter than 5 is to 1, so that uh, farm equipments could move easily and agricultural operation or cropping um, could take place uh, easily without any hindrance or any without any problem. Now, coming to types of broad based terraces, broad based terraces are classified broadly into two categories. One is graded or channel type terraces and other is level or ridge type terrace. So, graded or channel type terrace and second is the level or ridge type terrace. So, let us discuss uh, about these one by one. Uh, starting with graded or channel type terrace. These are constructed by cutting a shallow channel on the uphill side and using only this soil to build the embankment. So, already we have seen that the cutting and filling this is the primary operation which is involved in this case and uh, thus uh, in this case uh, a channel channel, channel shallow channel is cut on the upstream side as you can see here this is the cut portion and then it is filled on the this is the fill portion. So, this is cut and this is fill uh, to to build the embankment. So, this is this ridge basically is nothing but it is a form of embankment. And, uh, I mean uh, uh, this is cut and fill already it is shown here this is cut this is fill, but important thing is that you should not get perturbed by seeing this simple shape because earlier we saw very smooth uh, or flat uh, shapes basically. So, in this I mean that is uh, possible also because if you we, what happens is that even if we see this case uh, very organized one where flat slopes are very organized one when we construct these we are seeing that this slope is very organized under normal circumstances, but what happens that with time when agricultural operation takes place then so even this will become something like this. So, this is precisely what we are seeing, uh, but so you should not get perturbed by looking at that picture. So, this is what basically we, we are talking about that this is the cut portion this is the fill portion even in this picture. So, coming back to uh, this um, picture once again. So, that is why it is uh, cutting a silo channel on the uphill side and using only this soil to build the embankment that is what being shown here. And primarily this graded or terrace channel removes excess water and minimizes erosion. So, important thing is excess water. So, that means that is why the grade or channel type the grade is graded or channel type slope because what happens that. Uh, this this cut portion which is nothing but uh, this which functions as channel this one is provided with a longitudinal slope or slope in the longitudinal direction so that means perpendicular to this screen so all along the length uh, this is provided a, a a grade and so that uh, uh, water can be taken away so that is the how the excess water removal of excess water is a major function of this graded or terrace type channels. So, this that is the major functional difference here and uh, obviously, it reduces minimizes erosion by reducing the slope length. So, as you can see here that we create a series of embankments. So, that means the area area between uh, any two burns that is x as a catchment area this is nothing, but this is this x is a catchment area for this particular uh, um, uh, terrace. So, what happens is that whatever rainfall will occur here 
that will be confined to this particular area and only that much area uh, uh, that much flow which is generated here that this channel has to take away. So, what we are doing that we are totally total length of the slope we are cutting down into different segments by constructing a series of by constructing a series of terraces uh, graded on channel type terraces. So, that is why total length is reducing and conducting the intercepted runoff to a CF outlet at a non erosive velocity. So, there are two functions because we are cutting down the total flow. So, obviously, uh, we are what we are doing is that we are the total flow we are reducing uh, by reducing the slope length. So, obviously, uh, the transport capacity of the water is reduced to a large extent and that is why erosion cannot take place or it, it is minimized. Similarly, whatever water that falls here that is intercepted by this channel and a because a longitudinal grade is provided. So, because of that it is taken away it is to a safe outlet with a non erosive velocity. So, we, we when we design the channel we ensure that the velocity of flow is non erosive we know we have seen this non erosive velocity many times. So, because, because we ensure that so obviously, there will be no erosion taking place even in the channel. So, that is how the total erosion is minimized in this case. Now, the side slopes of both the channel and the ridge are kept edge flat with possible to facilitate the farming operation that we have already seen that typically for uh, uh, for broad based stresses the slopes are kept edge flat as possible flatter than 5 is to 1. So, that farming operations could take place and since construction and uh, maintenance of, of a satisfactory channel is required this should not be built because here we see that safe removal of water is a major function. So, channel is the major component. So, that is why these should be avoided I mean these uh, type of graded type of terraces should be avoided in deep sands or on soils that are too stony, steep or shallow to permit adequate construction. So, if uh, it is a deep sand then construction of a channel its stability would still be issue. Similarly, it is too stony or too steep or too shallow a soil then obviously, sufficient depth we, it may not be possible to have a sufficient cut or sufficient depth of the channel uh, to be able to carry the uh, uh, desired flow at a non erosive velocity. So, obviously, one has to be careful uh, where where these channels are uh, where these graded or channel type of terraces should be constructed. Now, typically uh, bro broad based terraces are adopted for slopes less than 8 percent, but if if for example, for any for any case if it is adopted for slope greater than 8 percent then back slope is grassed. So, this is the back slope. So, this is grassed and it may be the slope may be provided 2 is to 1. So, this is 2 is to 1 slope and the uh, grass this should be protected by grass. So, that by chance if any over topping takes place then also there will be no chance of any erosion occurring. So, this these care have to be taken by constructing these terraces. Now, the next category is level or ridge type terrace and primarily used for moisture conservation. So, that is the major difference from functional difference graded or channel type are more for removal of excess water where a level or ridge type terraces are more for moisture conservation and they are adopted in low to mid moderate rainfall regions. Uh, for trapping and holding rainfall for infiltration into the soil profile. So, the purpose here is that most of the rainfall that occurs between two terraces that should be trapped within that area and uh, then the entire water should get infiltrated into the soil profile. So, so that moisture is conserved and they can be used even in high rainfall areas if the soil is permeable, permeable or if the infiltration capacity of soil is high, uh, high enough then they can be used even in high rainfall area because even more rainfall that can be that will be uh, uh, conserved uh, 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 through infiltration process in such soil. And from construction point of view the difference is that embankment is constructed of soil taken from both sides of ridge. So, here as we saw in the, um, the graded terrace only one side the upstream side was cut but here both sides you see the cut here, cut here also and the soil is taken to create the fill. So, that we have sufficiently high 
embankment built so that entire moisture could be stored and conserved within the terrace area. So, that is very important uh, from uh, 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 that is um, from the operational point of view for these terraces. Now, coming to design of uh, graded terraces, uh, design of graded terraces when we say it includes spacing that is terrace spacing, terrace grade we have to make a decision, terrace length and of course, the cross section. So, these are the four major parameters on which we have to make a decision when we are talking about designing a graded terrace. And design is primarily governed by land slope which is obviously the most important feature. Then soil characteristics like soil type and soil depth that we have seen that how depth could affect uh, the selection of a particular even graded type of terrace. Cropping pattern that is what kind of crop we are going to grow, what is the soil management practice and of course, climatic conditions that is the rainfall which is the most important because that will govern uh, uh, the most of the design parameters that how much water is to store and so on. So, these are the primary data which are required for designing a graded terrace. Now, coming to the first uh, uh, criteria that is terrace spacing. Terrace spacing is expressed as the vertical or horizontal distance between corresponding points on two adjacent terraces. So, this point we have already seen uh, that is vertical and horizontal interval. This is true for burns also earlier we saw in the case of burned also and we have also seen in case of uh, uh, bench terrace that vertical and horizontal intervals are calculated. So, terrace spacing is uh, quite a common feature we do not need to discuss. And uh, horizontal spacing we know is useful in determining the row arrangement and vertical spacing is useful in the terrace layout and construction then how it how the terraces will be laid and how they will be constructed that is governed. So, this spacing part we have already uh, we already know what it is. But important thing is that uh, in case of uh, graded terraces there are certain recommenders, uh, recommendations given for deciding the vertical interval based on climatic regions and soil types. For example, if it is a humid region and soil is erodible then obviously, for such places narrow terraces will be required and this case formula this formula can be used V i is equals to S plus 4 by 10 whereas, the land slope in percent. Wherein if it is a less humid region or sub humid region for example, and soils are not so erodible that is normal soils then this equation can be used equation that is V i equals to S plus 6 by divided by 10. So, as you can see that this will result in slightly narrow uh, terrace as compared to this. So, these equations can be straight away used for um, deciding on the vertical interval. And uh, recommended spacing of grid terraces as per the recommendation by United States Soil Conservation Service which we already see is now known as NRCS Natural Resources Conservation Service and uh, as per this uh, for different land slope say for example, 4 percent land slope vertical terrace spacing is 1.2 meters and horizontal spacing is 30 meters. For if it is 10 then it is 2.1 meters and horizontal interval is 21 meters. So, straight away one can use these recommendations of US NRCS or one can also calculate, but these recommendations are available which can be adopted. Terrace grades if you talk about terrace grades are uh, should be sufficient to provide good drainage which is quite obvious and that is the primary uh, purpose of the graded channel uh, or, grade or graded or channel type terrace and to carry away desired flow without scouring the channels that is at non erosive velocity that we have already considered. If grades are not sufficient then water lock condition may occur. So, obviously, if grades are not sufficient then sufficient amount of water will not be taken away. So, water logging may take place and as a result crops may be drowned and farm operations may be difficult. So, we should always grades should be provided in such a way that water logging conditions should not be created otherwise crop characteristic crop crop in uh, crop uh, production as well as the farm operations will be uh, hindered. And uh, the graded terrace are constructed with variable or uniform grades. So, both grades are possible. In uniform graded terrace, the slope remains constant throughout its length 
and it is adopted for short terraces where the slope range is between 0.1 to 0.6 percent depending upon soil condition and length of terrace. So, if uniform graded terrace then it is adopted for short terraces and the slope range has to be between 0.1 to 0.6 wherein steeper grades are recommended for impervious soils and short terraces. So, if it is impervious soil and short terrace then we may go for steeper grade that is 0.6 percent may be. And maximum velocities uh, erosive non erosive velocities uh, this I am putting because there is a some conflict here. American Society of Agriculture Engineers 1972 they recommended that uh, non erosive velocity 0 0.46 meter per second for most erosive soil and 0.61 meter per second for other soils. Earlier in a in, in lecture we read that 0.5 meter per second and 0.69 meter per second is non erosive velocities. Uh, these are almost similar though not exactly the same, but almost similar. So, we have to see either of them are met and most likely if we should go by lower one that is the ASC recommendation. So, that if, if this is met then obviously, this recommendation will automatically be met. And uh, uh, a, a, a US NRCS has also re recommended channel grades for variable gravity traces. So, if it is a 150 to 240 meter say terrace length in between that range. So, lower quarter could have 0.4, second quarter could have 0.3, third quarter could have 0.2 and upper quarter could have 0.2. So, 0 0.4, 0 0.3, 0 0.2, 0 0.2 these are the recommendations one can straight away take from these tables or one can always make own decision depending upon the site conditions. Now, coming to terrace length. Terrace length uh, is dependent on the size and shape of the field, outlet position, rate of runoff, infiltration rate and channel capacity. So, there are many para parameters which affect the terrace length and maximum length for graded terrace should be limited to 300 to 500 meters. Whatever be the conditions that is whatever be the size and shape of the field, outlet position, rate of runoff, infiltration rate and channel capacity, the max length is limited to. 500 meters and length of grade terrace may be greater in perme permeable soil than in um, impermeable soil because it is expected that over the length also some water will be absorbed by or infil get infiltrated in the channel length. And the terrace length should be such that the flow velocity remains non erosive. So, whatever be the condition this is a must condition that flow through the channel should always take place at non erosive velocity that we have to always ensure that is a very important um, consideration. Now, coming to terrace cross section, terrace cross section consists of a channel and a ridge which we have already seen and these are proportional to fit the landscape, the crops grown and farm machinery used and uh, 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 the typically the width is such kept such so that farm machinery could fit into it. And the cross section is made up of three different slopes and these three different are cut slope, front slope and back slope. So, as you are see here this is the channel cut. So, this is called cut slope and these are built constructed slopes. So, this one this is first constructed slope which is referred to as front slope and this is the second constructed slope which is referred to as back slope. So, there are three there is a cut slope, there is a front slope and there is a back slope and sometimes this one is referred to as upper cut slope and if this continues here then it is also referred to as lower cut slope, but it, it, these three slopes will definitely be there. So, these are referred to as cut slope, front slope and back slope. So, these three slopes are there. Now, the front slope width is kept equal to machinery width ordinarily used for row crop operations. So, typically the this is this, these are some of the definition sketch here. So, basically this is we, we saw in the previous example that this is upper uh, this is cut slope, this is front slope, this is back slope, this is cut, this is fill, this is fill. So, the this portion the channel center line this is a channel center line and this is the terrace center line. So, from 
from this portion that is from where the channel is starting point is there and that center line this width is referred to as WC that is the width of the cut slope or, or channel or cut slope basically C for cut slope wherein from cent channel center line to the terrace center line this is referred to as WF or width of the front slope and from uh, this terrace center line to the end point it is referred to as WB or width of the back slope. So, there are three, three slopes and there are three widths here. So, WC, WF and WB and this C here is this is uh, basically uh, if we draw a horizontal line from here and also horizontal line from the upper end of the ridge the difference between these two is H that is uh, H is uh, the, uh, the depth of flow or sorry the total depth actually depth of uh, between depth total depth and uh, this is this portion is cut that is from if you draw a horizontal line from the original land surface to the bottom of the channel that is cut and from the top of the ridge to the original line uh, original land line if we draw a vert measure the vertical this is is this is fill. So, this is cut this is fill this is h the difference between the top of this and top of this the horizontal vertical interval difference is h um, this is h that is h is the total depth. And uh, uh, so, here this w f that is the width this one is kept equal to machinery width ordinarily used for row to row crops. The front and back slopes are kept gentle to facilitate the cultural operations using machinery usually flatter than 5.1. So, that is why so we have to keep them as flat as possible flatter than uh, 5 is to 1. And the depth of flow that is d equals to h minus freeboard this is h. So, if freeboard is h it determined from the peak runoff rate for 10 year return period is term. So, in this case because we this is the excess flow we have to take away. So, we have to consider the peak runoff rate and for that 10 years frequency is considered for the storm. So, uh, uh, with equal side slope width. So, if W C that is cut slope is equal to W F front slope equal to W B that is back slope equal to W that is terrace width. So, if W C, W F and W B all are equal that is equal to terrace width then cuts and fill cuts and fill from the geometry R the cut and fill not cuts it is a cut and fill from the geometry R C plus F this is C plus F is H obviously plus whatever be the inclination of the original uh, um, uh, original land. So, H plus this is W. So, slope elevation difference because of the original land slope over W that will be added here. So, it is C plus F equal to H plus S times W where C is the cut, F is the fill, H is the depth of the channel including freeboard, S is the original land slope and W is the width of the um, side slope or width of the uh, width of the terrace. So, uh, this condition is true if W C equal to W F equal to W B. So, this is important we have to consider C plus F plus H plus S plus S times W. So, obviously, using this relationship we can find out cut and fill uh, with corresponding to um, channel depth that is relationship uh, basically we can find out. And the commonly used uh, dimensions of graded terrace commonly used dimensions of graded terrace as per USDA uh, soil conservation service agricultural handbook number 57 which is now NRCS. So, uh, uh, for a particular land slope let us say we consider 4 percent land slope and if terrace length is say 60 120 or 120 let us consider 120 meters for different length it is given terrace ridge height will be 27 centimeters the unit is centimeters. So, for 4 percent land slope 120 meter torus terrace length the total ridge height will be 27 and the channel back slope ridge four slope and ridge 
back slope that is basically the cut slope what we talked about the cut slope this is nothing but cut slope this is w of f that is w front slope and this is nothing but w b or back slope same thing we are talking about the values are 6 is to 1, 8 is to 1 and 8 is to 1. So, that means using this uh, if we know the field slope and once we have decided the terrace length then also we can take the standard dimensions as per USDA SCS agricultural handbook also. So, these are the this is how we can uh, different uh, parameters of a graded terrace can be decided. Now, uh, we talk about the design of ter level terrace the concepts or principles remain the same only certain changes are there. So, if we talk about design specifications terrace length its length is comparatively much longer than the graded terrace. So, it is maybe up to 800 meters in the case of graded as we saw that it is limited to 300 to 500 meters that is 500 meter was the upper limit where in this case in case of level terrace it could go up to 1000 meters. Channel gradient we saw there was a gradient of 0.1 to 0.6, but in this case because gradient is not a factor. So, in this case flat terraces are used. So, channel is not provided any grade uh, in this case. Terrace width terrace width is kept the same age for graded terraces because it is the farm machinery width which basically governs the terrace width. So, same concepts are used whether it is a graded or it is a level terrace. The vertical interval horizontal spacing and side slopes these are calculated in the same way as the case of graded terrace. So, that means almost all the uh, calculations are done almost in the similar way uh, only difference is that uh, in this case in the case of level terrace because we are more concerned in the moisture conservation that means the total runoff volume. So, 10 year frequency runoff volume is used in this case where in this the other case level uh, graded terraces case we were interested in peak flow. So, the peak flow rate was used here it is runoff volume is used and on other difference is that uh, the length in that graded terrace is limited to 500 meters in this case will be taken as 1000 meters. So, um, with this we come to the end of this lecture and we have seen how to decide uh, various parameters be it be the spacing, be it grade, be it length, be it cross section, uh, uh, the cut and fill and uh, channel height uh, relationship all those we have seen and utilizing these concepts we can design graded or level terraces is the case may arrive or, the, or rather the broad based traces. Thank you very much.